These are the goals for the gene expression chapter. By the time you have finished these activities, you should be able to address these goals. Gene expression can be summarized as the process by which we get from gene to protein. There are two main components to this process, transcription and translation. We will focus first on transcription. Transcription makes an RNA copy or transcript of a gene found on DNA. Just like in DNA, RNA must be synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This means that as transcription occurs, new RNA nucleotides are added only to the 3' prime end of the growing transcript. In lab, we would have used a model kit to simulate transcription. Here, we will use our slides to work through the process. Let's practice. Here is a DNA molecule. Which of the two strands will be the template strand for transcription? Yes, the top strand running in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. When transcription begins, what enzyme will make the RNA transcript? And in which direction will the RNA transcript be synthesized? Pause the video here and write down what the RNA transcript will look like. Yes, the RNA transcript was synthesized in the 5 to 3 prime direction by RNA polymerase. Here is our RNA transcript. What is this molecule more commonly called? Yes, mRNA or messenger RNA. What will happen next with our mRNA molecule? In eukaryotes, the mRNA molecule is processed before leaving the nucleus. However, this is not a detail we get into in lab. So we will next discuss translation, in which the information on the mRNA molecule is used by a ribosome to build a protein. This slide shows the genetic code, an ordered arrangement of all 64 possible mRNA codons and which amino acid each one corresponds to. Only the three stop codons do not correspond with amino acids. Note there is a genetic code table in your textbook and in your class manual in addition to the one shown here. In lab, we again would have used a kit to model translation, but we'll do this using our slides for practice. We will now examine two other important molecules involved in translation. First is the ribosome. The ribosome attaches to the mRNA molecule and serves as the location at which the amino acids will form peptide bonds. The next important molecule is transfer RNA or tRNA. tRNA molecules are responsible for transferring amino acids from the cytosol to the ribosome. tRNA molecules contain anticodons. The anticodon of a given tRNA molecule corresponds with the codon on the mRNA molecule. The anticodon forms hydrogen bonds with the codon to hold the tRNA molecule in place as translation occurs. Let's consider an example with an mRNA codon of AAG. What would the tRNA anticodon be? Yes, UUC. The same base pairing rules apply. Now, which amino acid will this tRNA be carrying? Pause for a moment and think about this one. If you said lysine, you're correct. The mRNA codon AAG corresponds with the amino acid lysine. Now, if you thought the amino acid was phenylalanine, that's because you used the tRNA anticodon UUC and not the mRNA codon AAG. This is an important detail. The mRNA codon is the only part that will tell us the amino acid. Now let's examine our mRNA transcript again. How many codons are there? Yes, seven. These seven right here. If we go to our genetic code table, we can match up each codon and figure out which amino acids will occur in our protein. First will be methionine, then histidine, glutamic acid, proline, serine, alanine, and then we reach a stop codon. So our mRNA transcript has now been translated into a polypeptide sequence. We can see that our transcript had seven codons, but there are only six amino acids. Why is that? 
right, the stop codon, UGA, does not correspond with an amino acid. So this tiny protein is only six amino acids long. This completes our activities for the gene expression chapter for lab. Make sure you complete your post-lab questions and contact your lab instructor if you have any further questions.